which swoonworthy actor do fans think would be perfect for the role of Draco Malfoy? Who almost replaced Daniel Radcliffe in the first Harry Potter movie? And which Sunderland legend would be perfect for the role of Professor McGonagall? Hi, I'm Joy, and let's get into it. Draco Malfoy In case you didn't know, deepfakes are the internet's way of recasting an iconic role in a movie or series with someone else for fun. Of course, with the entire Harry Potter cast being absolutely legendary, the internet has been bursting with hypothetical recasts. Protego Totalum. <laughs> Salvia Hexia. What are you doing? Tom Felton stole a lot of hearts as the bratish Draco, and while he left some seriously big shoes to fill, there's a certain Timothy Chalamet currently rising to the top in Hollywood. I grew up on Harry Potter in some way. I grew up seeing those movies. So that first time seeing Emma Watson, it's gonna be weird for her to see now. <laughs> but, uh, but that was like definitely a, a weird moment. Having starred in the critically acclaimed Call Me By Your Name, he's already proved himself to be an excellent actor and would absolutely nail it in a slightly darker role. It's not much of a stretch to imagine him as the proud Slytherin who likes to think of himself as a superior mastermind. And a platinum blonde Timothy? You know you'd like to see that. Or well, maybe Timothy! He was a closet major Potter fan. Yeah, maybe was. Timothy. Speaking of wicked blondes, there might be another young actor fans would love to see in a Slytherin uniform. It's Nicholas Hamilton whom you might have seen in movies like It and Dark Tower. Not only does Nicholas really look the part, but he has a snide sneer and a sinister smile that makes you doubt his intentions. Totally Draco, isn't it? Timothy or Nicholas? Who do you think would make the best Draco? Albus Dumbledore The beloved Hogwarts headmaster was Harry's pillar of support until his shocking death in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. However, even after his death, Dumbledore continued to help Harry and his friends from beyond the grave. Dumbledore is wise and sometimes quirky, making Morgan Freeman with his twinkling eyes the perfect candidate for the role. After all, it wouldn't be the first time he played a powerful, almighty character. Of course, Morgan might need to wait in line for the role of Dumbledore because all the way back when the character had to be recast due to Richard Harris's tragic death, fans were all rooting for Patrick Stewart to take on the role. And it's clear why. In a way, with Dumbledore being unfailingly polite, well-spoken and always relatively calm, he's much like Patrick's X-Men character Professor X. Both actors have quite a big range when it comes to their past characters, and both actors are legends in their own way, just like Dumbledore. So whichever way the fandom leans, Albus Dumbledore will be justified. What do you think about Patrick almost really having been chosen for Dumbledore's replacement? Ron Weasley Rupert Grint brought Ron Weasley to life in every shape and form. From his goofy smile to his sometimes clumsy demeanor, it's hard to imagine anyone else betraying Harry's red-headed best friend. Well, you might just feel differently when you think of a certain other goofball we got to know and love on Netflix's Stranger Things. Would you rather see fan art of Dustin as Harry Potter or Dustin as Spider-Man? I have a deep, deep love for both. It's so close. Anyone got a coin? That's right. Gaten Matarazzo might just be the perfect Ron Weasley replacement. Like Ron, who for years struggled to prove himself amongst his higher achieving brothers, Gaten struggled getting acting gigs because of a condition called cladocranial dysplasia, something which the writers of Stranger Things expertly incorporated into his character on the show. And even though Gaten doesn't exactly have the signature Weasley red hair and freckles, we all know he certainly has the charm for it. All right, Harry Potter. Ah, they got his wand right too. Hermione Granger The Harry Potter books describe Hermione as many things. She's smart, but not the best at making new friends. She has muggle dentists for parents, and her hair is huge and frizzy. Well, while we all know Emma Watson did a brilliant job at bringing out all these traits, what if the casting directors had gone in another, slightly different direction? Actress Sky Jackson first stepped into the spotlight as Zuri Ross on Disney's Jessie and has throughout the show grown up in front of fans' eyes. Sky would make a fine Hermione, because just like Zuri, she's bright, quirky, and strong, and never never holds back when she wants to say something. Of course, Sky might only be one option, whereas it seems more fans have in recent times been leaning in the direction of yet another Stranger Things star, Millie Bobby Brown. At least no one on the Gryffindor team had to buy their way in. They got in on pure talent. No one asked your opinion, you filthy little mudblood. Several deep fakes have been circling the internet with Millie's face photoshopped onto that of Hermione, and it's truly shocking how well she fits the character, even though Millie herself recently admitted to have never even watched the Harry Potter movies. Can you believe it? No, Millie doesn't like Harry Potter that much. 
But she did the test because me and Ava made her too, and now she's a Slytherin. Charlie, live and die. What are you, Charles? Uh, I'm Hufflepuff. Harry Potter. When the Harry Potter books were first being discussed as a film series, the original suggestion was that Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone would star Haley Joel Osment as Harry. Of course, if Haley had been cast as the character, we probably wouldn't have had the same scrappy, sometimes awkward Harry Potter we've gotten to know from Daniel Radcliffe. So, with Harry being the main protagonist, it's integral that in the event of a recasting whichever actor takes his place must be someone fans can root for. If you've been watching Gotham on Fox, you've probably been impressed by the performance of young Bruce Wayne, as portrayed by David Mazuz. David, having been only 14 years old when Gotham first aired, can channel anything from somber and sad, cheerful and funny, or serious and direct. He can plead, threaten, question, and command in a way that we simply can't look away from. Despite being slightly too tall for Harry's description these days, the young actor still embodies everything fans would love to see from the boy who lived. But David isn't the only slightly too tall actor who might be a fit for Harry's robes. Since he started in movies like Nanny McPhee and Hugo, Asa Butterfield recently stepped back into the light for his role in the Netflix drama Sex Education. Asa is perfect for Harry not only because he was born in London, but he also has Harry's curious blue eyes and dark hair. Already having some experience with fantasy-based movie productions, Asa might just be the best candidate to wield wands and zip through the air playing Quidditch. What do you think? Severus Snape The late Alan Rickman's portrayal of Severus Snape was one for the ages. Alan left an indelible mark as the seemingly evil, misunderstood half-blood prince who later turned out to be the unsung hero. Snape's story being as complex as it is, is exactly what leaves the fandom torn between two legendary actors for the role. If you haven't seen it in your mind by now, be prepared to have your mind blown. Adam Driver as Severus Snape Think about it. Not only is Adam a similarly somber actor, but we already know him for one of the most villainous characters in recent years, with his character Kylo Ren murdering his own father, Han Solo. We know Adam can play dark and brooding characters, especially the ones people are drawn to for unexplained reasons. You might find it interesting to know that fans are so invested in this recasting that they've even been petitioning to get Adam cast as Snape in the event that there should be a Harry Potter prequel. Maybe it's the similarities between Kylo Ren and Snape's personalities, or maybe it's them both struggling to choose between good and bad, but fans seem really serious about their choice. Still, despite Adam's extraordinary snake-like appearance, another actor's name has been floating around the fan base. It's Benedict Cumberbatch, who we've already seen portraying a mysterious, slightly quirky Doctor Strange, not to mention Sherlock Holmes, who tends to be all over the place most of the time. Wouldn't it be intriguing to see Benedict try and recreate Alan Rickman's interpretation of Severus Snape, especially since he's been known to do a fantastic impression of Alan's distinctive voice? Rolling down the street, smoking in dough, <laughs> sipping on gin and juice. <laughs> Lay back. <laughs> Hagrid. When it comes to Hagrid, the Potterverse fans made the very interesting choice of Idris Elba portraying the gentle giant. Even though we haven't seen Idris in such a goofy, endearing role, he might just be the perfect replacement. After all, he did play Heimdall, the sole protector of Asgard's Bifrost in Thor. With both characters being a bit more isolated and seriously overprotective when they want to be, Idris should fit right in. Not to mention that at well over six feet, he'd actually hover over Harry like a real-life giant. Wouldn't that be a fine sight? Of course, if you're going for a more realistic approach, sticking to Hagrid's lovable clumsiness and overall shaggy appearance, the actor who might just be the perfect pick is Jorge Garcia. Like Hagrid, Jorge played a similarly loyal and compassionate character on Lost, and it certainly doesn't hurt that he's been mistaken for the original Hagrid actor, Robbie Coltrane, on multiple occasions. People, they don't know Robbie Coltrane by name, but they'll be like, Have you, were you in Harry Potter? Uh. <laughs> when the hair was longer. Okay. Don't you think Jorge would make an awesome care of magical creatures teacher? I've Jorge. even been sent pictures of Hagrid to, to sign, sign in my fan mail. I love it. Wow. Aww. They're like, uh, this is a picture of the actor Rob Coltrane with love. Voldemort. Ray Fiennes is rarely recognized for his role as Voldemort out of costume, and that just goes to show how well he portrayed the character. Voldemort and all his pale-skinned, noseless glory will forever be sketched into our brains, not to mention how Fiennes pumped just the right amount of creepy into his shrill, high-pitched voice. When it comes to recasting Voldemort, what better actor to consider than someone who co-starred alongside Ralph in their haunting, critically acclaimed Holocaust drama Schindler's List? That's right, some fans have been speculating what it might be like to see Liam Neeson as 
that's he who must not be named. Liam, being slightly less lanky than Ralph, might just put a new spin on Voldemort we're yet to see. Then again, the two actors have both opened up about being mistaken for each other, so we might end up not even noticing the difference. Professor McGonagall Dame Maggie Smith was both stern and feisty, making her comical character Professor McGonagall surprisingly popular among fans. Like with Draco, Professor McGonagall isn't easily replaced, but there are two stellar actresses who might just do the character justice. If you want strong yet humorous, look no further than Shondaland and giant Viola Davis. Having portrayed the steadfast lawyer Annalise Keating on how to get away with murder, Viola knows how to deal with scattering youngsters constantly getting themselves into all sorts of trouble. Harry. Ron and Hermione might never have tried to hide a dead body, but surely Viola can handle a few trolls in the dungeon. Someone you know will be able to handle them is Julie Andrews. Just like Dame Maggie, Julie is a classic in the world of acting and her personality would fit perfectly with the role of Professor McGonagall. She might be up in years, but she has years of experience in iconic and legendary films. Some may say she's a bit too bubbly, but others will understand that she has a stern side she could release for the role. Whether you're on Team Viola or Team Julie, you've got great taste either way. Even though there are currently no official discussions regarding a Harry Potter reboot, fans are constantly rounding up their perfect candidates for their favorite characters. Which of the casting choices do you agree with more? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.